James Harney and welcome to Extra Time. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future content. Tonight we have a special guest joining us. Alongside Adam Murray and Mr Briggs, we have a current member of the Watford Senior Hurling panel and former St Declan student, Kieran Curran. Thanks for coming on, Kieran. No matter at all, and thanks for having me, right? No matter. Um, we'll just go through uh, your life in St Declan's and go all out and find it. Yeah, it was a great year. It was my first year actually in St. Eckens. I only came into St. Eckens' fifth year. And that would have been my first year with him. And, uh, but geez, no, it was a great, great year. Like, it was some, some team. Thinking back to I always think back to that, like, how, how we kind of left it behind us. Like, but it was most of just the good memories in the Munster final out of it, like, you know. Yeah, like, it's, it's one of those things where, you won, the, you won the intermediate uh, East Eastern final against Mount Club Valley Dern and uh, I suppose it's kind of <laughs> difficult to not be able to celebrate and have a session like you normally would. Oh Jesus, yeah, it was definitely not different like the whole COVID thing, like everything, everything is different, like you know, and I suppose not being able to celebrate and things like that is kind of, it's something you, you, it's still better winning, like you'd, you'd rather, it's great to win like and I know you can't celebrate but sure, hopefully things will go back to normal soon enough and you'll be able to really celebrate, you know, like, but was to have a season, have a season at all. Like, was uh, when you said back there in May or June, like it didn't look like there's gonna be any GA this year. Like, but it's just great. It was great to have club back. You know, have something back. Like, say if yeah. Aaron won, James, you would have been breaking out, would you? Oh, <laughs> last year it was a bit of a rival. Now the match was there's a few red cards, but yeah, you probably expect that with Valley Aaron and Kill. Actually, that 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 always happens. <laughs> And um, you got pulled up this year on the water panel, am I correct? Yeah, yeah. This is my uh, first year, uh, first year in the water panel. Yeah, uh, I called in there around February. February, I called in after the college tournament to college. So, uh, no, it's great. It's great to be in there. Like some, uh, some setup. Like my first time being in on anything like that and like training at that level and hurling a few of them boys. Like you know, it's fucking, it's fantastic. Like sorry for the language. And uh, I just go back, like, you know, when you were in school, I suppose. Um, funnily enough, in my time in St. Eklund's, there's, um, they've only gotten to two um, All-Ireland hurling and obviously the football a few years ago. But in both instances, I suppose, with the Camogie, Shauna Casey had um, finished the year before and she came back and repeated. And she was the player. And then you were the others. You came from, De La Salle you came from, wasn't it? Yeah, it's our style, yeah, yeah. And like, it just goes to show you that, like, you know, you talk about jigsaw pieces and putting the final pieces together. That, like, I mean, look, no player is probably any more important than others, but at the same time, like, it it gives you much more options. And I suppose at the time, we, we needed someone like you, big ball winner, very quick, um, special turn, center forward, massively important position. But like, uh, that must have really helped you though, coming to a new school and straight away, like you're integrated into the hurling, we're, do we're quite successful and you're kind of making friends straight away. Yeah, def definitely. Like, because I know I would have known a lot of lads, say, playing the underage, the underage together, like say, Ross Coffee, a few of these boys. But I come, coming in and uh, playing, I didn't really know what to expect, like, to you know what kind of team or, I knew a few of the lads would be good, like, but uh, I remember playing a few challenge matches before and I'm just thinking like, Geez, actually have a good team here, like when you think about it. And we played playing that first game in, against Carrick in Port Law. And they geez, they did a great, great game. Like and I was thinking, Jesus, we can go a long way here, like, you know. And uh just the way the year panned out, like it just just kind of clicked, like worked perfectly, didn't it? You know, the few moments like even training. The biggest moment I remember is training over Christmas. And I remember he was training up in the pitch, and I think I don't know, it was, it was after Christmas anyway, and you ran the absolute <laughs> ran the legs off us. But I remember it was just it was kind of the final moment where like we were kind of like this is you know we're going for it like. Yeah, I remember. I'll never forget. Craig Terrell was absolutely vomiting his his cons, contents of the stomach, but he did it, you know. And yeah, uh, but don't like because I remember that game against Carrick. We were absolutely shocking. We we're atrocious, and I thought yeah. I actually thought to myself, we'll be lucky to win any game this year. But I suppose momentum. And you got better and better and better. And I suppose, look, the way we were training as well, it was my first year training with all the lads, so they kind of had to get used to that as well and the way we want, style we wanted to play. But everything clicked in. And, you know, like you said, it kind of would still wrangle with me that we were good enough to win that other final, but we just didn't take our chances on the day. 
Um, I suppose you kind of fast forward from there then when you go to college. So, like, you said you were, like, you were spotted playing for the college. It must be great then to be able to, you know, you go, you go from playing with, say, guys who, like, like Caleb Lyons in science school, excellent players. Then you get the other side of it then, guys from Kilkenny, Tipperary, Clare, etc. And they must really bring you on as well. Oh, definitely. Without a doubt, like, you're, you're, playing, with, you're playing with the best, you know, some of the best counties players from minor. You know, you, you've been played against them in challenges and then you're playing with them. You get to know them and you get to, you know, it's, you kind of pick up things off some, you know, great players, like you pick up small things. And when you're marking them in training, like, you know, it's that's where you find I get, you know, you get better. Like, you can have to mark players better than you to actually bring yourself up, like, because, you know, other than that, like, you're not going to make, push yourself to get better, like. And I suppose, <clears throat> it's strange because I actually, some of the best hurling I've played, like, I was in college. I'd done freshers in uh, college and then I dropped out and I went to New Zealand for a year and then I got an opportunity to play hurling in Australia for a year, believe it or not. So I went over there, but I, geez, I played with like, like Aaron Cunningham from, uh, from Clare, played against Joe Cooney. Like, it was actually, it was a great standard of hurling over there, but it, was, it actually brought me on a long way, like, to be honest with you. And with the with the hurling with the college is where a lot of people would be saying like it's only one step away from the intercounty. But do you think uh, there's much uh, between them at all, or would you know it's much of a difference? Oh, uh, I, I, there's there's not much of a difference at all, really. I find. Well, what, what the difference was is before I suppose it was played in the winter and it's played in wetter conditions, like. But sure now now the way the intercounty's gone now it's, it's the same, like you know. But definitely, like some of the players, some of the college teams, and you look at it, like they. They'd go, they'd go well senior, like as an inter county team themselves. Like, they're definitely like. I might ask you about uh, Liam Cattle's train with him uh, emphasizing like work rate. And would you find the trains hard going? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, they're, they're definitely tough now. There's sometimes now you'd be, uh, you'd be hanging, but yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a great group in there that would bring you along. Like, you're never left behind as, as such. Like, you're always. You're always part of the team. There's no one, no man left behind. Like you're always just fucking training hard, like you know. Um, but it's definitely tough going. Like, but that's the level it is now. That's the way hurling has gone. Like, there's fellas clocking 11, 12 kilometers in matches, 13 kilometers. Like, it's it's crazy stuff, really. Yeah, because like obviously you're still a very young man, but I mean, look, even from my experience, it often takes a year, two years, three years to get up to the level. You know, you got condition. But you've also got your say, like your VO two max, your like your endurance, um, and I suppose it's your first year on the panel. Like I'm, I'm assuming that you're you're hoping you're going to hope to build on this and you know get even fitter next year, bigger, stronger, quicker. Yeah, without a doubt. Oh, definitely. The first few weeks now, like in there, because I came in late to the panel. Like a lot of them lads were trained in there from from November, December. Like, and I came I came in late. So it took me, it did take me a while just to catch up. Like it was tough. And I still, I suppose, am catching up, but the level of training is just, it's just quicker. Like it's, it's, just, it's a step quicker than a hurling with club, like, you know, as in train wise. But like, I definitely be looking to build on that now, like get a good preseason in this, this year now and hopefully push on from there. Then again, like push on to more levels, higher levels. And can I just take uh, something there? Because I, I know myself, um, I, I like I suppose I was at the end of my career and I headed over to Abu Dhabi there for a couple of years but uh, the first thing of course I did was I joined the GA club and you just mentioned there you were playing in New Zealand and uh, in Australia like it, it's it's an amazing thing that no matter where you go in the world like you will find probably a GA team yeah definitely and and and, and when I was in Australia like geez I, they look after you so well it's kind of it's just, it is a community like it's such a community and when you do, like, you wouldn't really be homesick there because was, they always look after you. They'll, you'll never be without a job or a comp, somewhere to stay or something. They'll always looking after you. But I just couldn't believe the standard over there. Like, it was, you know, when you're going over there and you're first thinking, you're like, Jesus, it'll be handy enough. Like, you know, it's, it, it is a great standard. Like, in playing, playing the sun too. Like, it's, <laughs> there's more of a social side to the J over there now, I must say. <laughs> yeah, well, like, I mean, look, that's, like, play, playing over there. You know, in a sunny desert climate, myself, that's the one thing I know. The, the ball is always dry, and it's much like it's incredibly enjoyable because you don't have to worry about rain or you don't have to worry about the wind. Um, and I suppose like that probably helps refine your skills as well for when you come back then and you're, you've made the county panel. So obviously, it, the standard has helped. Yeah, definitely. But it was kind of a strange way I, took, I suppose I took it. Like I never played on 21 at Waterford. Like I was away for them two years, traveling like. 
And I don't know, I suppose when I went to Australia, like, just, I don't know, I kind of, I, I started to enjoy hurling again, like, I suppose, you know, it really just kind of kicked me on. Came home to the college then, and I got, it went Fitzgibbon and it started going well, like, and it just kind of kicked on from there, like, you know. It was, um, it was definitely good, though, a great experience over there, like, seeing, especially different sports, like, where I was, Melbourne, such a sport, place with AFL and all, like, you know, it's, some of the lads, I, I play actually trained a bit of that over there, but it's just mental fitness and stuff over there, like. And do you and think that, if you do you think if you hadn't gone over to Australia and played at a in certain giant playing over there, like you might not be playing with Waterford now? Yeah, I suppose if you look at that, yeah, it's cool, probably true. Like I don't know, like it's hard to know what way it would have went. Like, but I, I played minor, and then after minor, I suppose I didn't really, I just didn't really enjoy hurling for a year or two, maybe. And then that kept coordinated when I did go to Australia. And I just started enjoying it and started loving it. And when I came back then, I just had a, a kind of a change of mindset as in work rate. Like, I'd done it way more in the gym, fitness-wise, like, which obviously proved my hurling. And it just kind of all clicked. And lucky I got the chance then to get in on the Walford team, which will bring me on now. And um, I'm going to ask you now about the competitions for places on the panel. Um, is there much competition for uh, Scots in the team in the starting 15? Oh, massive, massive competition. Not even the starting 15, the, start, the, the 26, the panel of 26, which is, uh, which is, it's it's tough this year, like, I suppose, if you're not on the match day 26, you can't go, you're like, you're not allowed to go into the match, like, you have to watch from home, which is, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's it's tough, like, because there's, you're trained the whole year, like, and then, you know, if you don't make 26, like, you're watching from home, like, it's, it's kind of not fair, really, like, surely, you'd be able to let a few more into the game, like, but the competition places is massive in there. Like the some of our train matches in there just be would be unreal, like standard. Like everyone's pushing from any anywhere from thirty, whatever, three or four, like you know, there's there's no there's no um serious competition for places like for twenty six and starting fifteen, like but it's great. It's great. It brings on it brings in brings on everyone's hurling. And uh when you see a lad in your position playing well, like and knowing you just you said you have to come up to this level to have any chance of being on the panel. Do you think, like, I suppose when I was growing up, I remember nearly the vast majority of players who were playing for Waterford. Number one, they were from the city. And number two, they were all from senior clubs. But I suppose, like, a lot of lads in the last, you know, seven or eight years have changed that. And, like, do you think that, like, you know, would you have felt yourself when you were growing up an underage level, like, you know, I suppose your, your, your club wouldn't have been seen as a traditional strong um, superpower of hurling. That like lim opportunities were limited, and you had to prove your, you had to prove double do double the work rate to prove yourself. Or do you find that now there's much more of a, say an openness to a guy from any? It could be playing junior B as long as he's good enough, you know, or um, he's he's more than welcome to come in for trials. Yeah, definitely, definitely underage. I found that a lot more now in senior maybe because. You know, all is what club you are and stuff like that. But definitely, as in recent years, like for some of the best intermediate, there's a lot of players from intermediate junior clubs now on that water team. Like, and I find like that you are getting more opportunities, but it's also tough. Sometimes you can get caught down there and and and, and trying to get seen, which is like college is great. That's why college is a great stage for lads from lower clubs that too get seen, like because you are playing at a high level, like. But um, but what. Um, local games are getting great exposure this year with the COVID like you know every game can be seen is all on YouTube now like do you know what I'm saying like a lot of games you know if managers or fellas looking at matches mightn't have went to but they can just get it up on YouTube now and they can just watch it from home you know what I mean it's, mm. it's games are a lot more accessible now or something now, I find and you were saying about the uh, competition for places in the panel there but like how would you kind of try and gain the advantage over some of the other players inside it's hard, like it's you be always you always have to do an extra bit. Like there's from when you're training inside, like you'd have to be doing at least one or two nights of gym work a night just to be keeping up with the lads. And then if you want to do any more hurling work and stuff, you'd have to be doing like it's all the extra bit you do outside the train. That that's how you can get the extra edge. But learning and watching, like taking stuff from different hurlers, is the main thing. Like you know, from lads in your position, and you see lads do different stuff, like it's like the minute and that. Like, you just pick up little things you have, they have, and you just try to implement that yourself, like. Um, but it's just all hard work, like. It's taking, like, you know, 
you never you're always looking to improve like and looking to get get up higher level like and like you know you think sometimes i think you know you read some of these horror stories in the paper about you know this guy was playing inter-county hurling for 10 years next thing he he gets a phone call or a text message saying thanks very much but you're done you're finished and i suppose look for a young player like you know yourself you come in and look, with all due respect for your club, it's probably a good bit below where you need to be in, in senior. I'm assuming that like, you, you really are looking for feedback from manager, coaches, from everyone, because like you want to improve. You don't want to be a one-season wonder where you're off the panel again next year. You want to be there for the next six, seven years. So like, do you, are, are, the, are the coaches at Waterford really good with that, or do you have to go um, and ask you know, specifically yourself? Oh, uh, they're very good. Very good feedback. Like, But you kind of just have to... You have to park your not your ego, but you have to be able to take criticism and not in order to uh, improve. Like, but she's not they are great. Like they're improving. My hurdles after coming on so much. Like, and my downfall always would have been for years is only have a right side. Like, which would have always been a thing. But now, like my left side now is nearly as good as my right side. Like, but things like that, you know, they need uh, you need to be able to take criticism, but don't take it in a bad way. Take it in a good way that you will go away, improve, work on it. Like working on outside yourself. But definitely the feedback, yeah, you definitely would be uh, getting a lot of feedback. But, like, great coaches and that would, you know, that's, that's, that's the level they're at, like. And uh, to finish up with now, I might ask about the build-up for the Munster fight and uh, how you're feeling. I don't know. It's it's strange, like, it doesn't really... I suppose it's a Munster final, like, it's my first time being in around round, nothing like that. But uh, I suppose it's, it's way different than other years. Like, other years, sure, they would have been... There would have been a three or four week build up, like or maybe three week build up from the semi final. It's it's in summer and it's just a different buzz and you know. But I suppose it is what it is now, like isn't it? And, um, but uh, definitely excited now for nervous and stuff. But sure, and it's is the it, monster it, final, and if you can't get up for monster final, you know. You know, in some ways, like I've been here myself. In some ways, it's it's. It's easier for someone like say Caleb or someone like Jamie Barron than it is for yourself because look. Like they've kind of they're established players now and they're on the panel well Jimmy Barron's on the panel six or seven years if not more and Caleb is kind of establishing the team and I suppose you have to turn up on the you know you have to look after yourself all that week you have to prepare exactly like he does and you know and you still not might get, get no time um, do you like do you find that side of it uh, the mental side of it hard because like you could be you, you're the whole man for your own club or do you think like it's just another learning curve? Hopefully next year I get you know more game time and we, we progress again. Um, I suppose it's mental mental thing in in the county is massive. Like the amount of like eating eating wise, like it's 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 crazy. The hydration and, and eating wise outside of, there's actually so much to it. Like because if you're not if not you fueling your body right, like if you're in training there, you're you're at nothing. Like and if you're not doing that, but uh. I suppose it's, it's it's kind of tough that way when you look at it that way, but it's still you never know what can happen on on the day, like or what what's needed, or you know you know, you always have to be ready as such. Like that's the way it is, like you know. But definitely be always looking to learn, like even nutrition wise. Like I, this is all new to me the way all nutrition of pre match meals and getting your carbs and the right amount of carbs and proteins and taking protein and this kind of stuff. It's all it is all new, like but uh. It's, it's definitely all a learning curve and, and uh, <clears throat> being young and that I'll be looking to build on that every year and hopefully you know sometimes just get a cement that starting to play some some stage and would you be able to use that as kind of maybe extra motivation when you're training or doing a bit on your own the fact that like you might not have got a match last day would that maybe drive you on a bit more to try and get into the team oh definitely definitely but it's not even it's 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 just perform well because there's lads behind you say last day I made the 26 but there's lads behind you on they're, they're looking to take your place on the 26 but you know there's well, it's definitely always hard work like you were matches there now last week like it's you're always looking to improve like and looking to show what you can offer offer against Limerick or I'll offer on the on the big day like what 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 you have to show like and what so when uh, when the manager's looking around like they know they can rely on you to offer you know off of what you've been doing in training and matches and stuff. Have you ever seen them? Um, I know it's a bit before your time now, but have you ever seen that? Uh, it's on YouTube, a fantastic uh, GA documentary called A Year Till Sunday. It's about the Galway team when they won the 1998 All-Ireland. Have you ever seen it? No. 
No, I can't say I've ever seen that now. I'd, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. It's absolutely brilliant. So basically that the camera's in all year and it's it was back when championship was championship and there was no back door. But like yeah. they, have, they have interviews with John O'Malley who's the manager and they obviously they go on to win the All-Ireland so it, it makes it a lot better. But they have interviews with the panel and I'll never forget it. There's a guy in it, I can't even remember his name and he was talking about, you know, like making the team, making the starting 15. It's so hard. And then he nearly has tears in his eyes because he's like, and he's saying, but actually making the bench is nearly harder. Because, you know, when you come, like, much like yourself, look, you're kind of always at a slight disadvantage when you come in because no player, like, no player comes probably straight into a county panel and starts starting the first year because of the fitness levels and, you know, buying into the team system. But, like, there is, like, like you were saying, like, it must be so cutthroat because, like, you were saying 26, but, like, you probably had a panel of 35 at one stage, if not more. And, like, every guy there is killing themselves to make that impression. So, like, you know, um, like, when, if you're playing, like, do you see the people on the team as your direct competition or are you looking at guys in the round, you're going, like, I have to move up a pecking ladder to try and get in those, you know, those five subs? Yeah, definitely. Jesus. It's, that's to say, like, we are a team, but uh, the team mentality is 100% there, but, like, it's, it's, it's kind of cutthroat that way as well, like, without a doubt, like, you know, <laughs> like, one injury and, you know, or something that way, like, that's, that's you gone then, like, or whatever. But definitely, you'd be always looking at your not looking at your competition as such, like, but uh, you just be looking to try always improve, you know, improve off them or kind of get off them, but bring in what you offer. Like, you know, every every player offers something different to the team. And the main thing is try to focus on what you offer most of the team and try to bring that. Like, there's a reason players are in there, a reason, you know, there's no bad herders in there. Do you know, but everyone has something good to offer. Like, so it's all about you know, when you're offering what you have to offer, like when it's called on. Uh, huge thanks to all my guests tonight, especially Kieran. I think I speak for all of us when I say we can't wait for Sunday and having Warford back in the Munster final. Don't forget the Warford Moe team that faced Tip on RT2 this Saturday at 2.45. And on Sunday, it's the turn of the senior herders on RT2 at 4pm. 4, 4 A huge weekend for the day show ahead. Please hit the like button and subscribe. To the channel. We'll see you next time on, on Extra Time.